to increase this number. So I won't be surprised if this number is going to increase in the future releases. Step number six, configuration session. An XOS offers a new way of configuring ACL, the configuration session mode. Now, in classical iOS, you had config T, meaning config terminal. Now, you also have config S, meaning config session. This new mode allows to dry run the configuration against the system resource availability. For dry run, we mean a process that allows the user to check whether the hardware resources are available without actually performing them any modification. An XOS in the first release supports only security ACL in config session mode. However, the goal is to have as many features up as possible within the config session so that the customers can actually dry run their changes on the several features and not only on security ACL. So during this step, we will create a new configuration session. We will uh, create a simple access list and apply the access list on, on an interface, verify the configuration, and then we will uh, commit the configuration. So let's create a new conf configuration session. And let's call it an XOS. Here we are, as you can see, config S instead of config T. For, from the S, you can understand it, whether you are in config T or config S. So first, le let's create a new ACL. As you can see, there is no more a standard ACL, uh, standard ACL, number ACL, it's only ACL. So we got rid of the types of ACL that you usually uh, see on the classical iOS, uh, we have just access list. There is no more standard, uh, numbered, extended, and so on. This will help uh, the customers to simplify their configuration. So IP access list and XOS, well, let's try to configure, a, to create a simple access list. For example, permit TCP, we can specify a network. As you can see, this slash notation also in the ACL, it helps when you have thousands of lines. Okay, permit, again, TCP. Okay, at this point what we can do is, uh, let's pick an interface and apply the access list. So IP, IP access group and XOS in. Now, if you go, in, if you check the running configuration for that interface, you see that the ACL is actually not there because we we are in config session mode. We didn't commit the configuration yet. So what we have to do to see the ACL in the running config of, of the interface is to commit actually the configuration within the config session. So but we, before we do that, we want to verify the configuration we have been uh, creating. So what you do, you do verify. As you can see, verification successful. So what happens during the verification process? What happens is that the operating system goes and checks whether the hardware resources are available to fit the ACL without doing any modification on the ACL TIGAM. Once the verification is successful, at this point, you can even leave the config session, okay? Come back later, and when only once you are ready, when you are ready, for example, in the window, in the maintenance window, you can go ahead and commit your configuration. What you can do from outside, you can also see your config session here. Here it is. So when once you are ready to commit the configuration, you can go in the config session mode. So config session and X OS. Do a commit. At this point, what you can see is that show running config interface e two three. After only after the commit, the access group 
is uh, actually applied on the interface. So you can have up to two concurrent config sessions per virtual device, meaning per VDC. What you can do, for example, is that you can also abort a config session by typing the abort uh, keyword within the config session. And you can create a new one at that point, start from scratch. Now, let's remove, before we go to the next step, let's remove the uh, ACL. Oops. Okay, like iOS. So this completes the step number six, configuration session. Again, the goal is uh, in, the in future releases to have as many features as possible within the config session. For now, in the first release, we have only ACL. Step number seven, OSPF. OSPF is fully supported on Nexus 7000. However, the way you configure the feature is different from the classical iOS. It's in fact interface centric. And you will see what I mean when I say interface centric. So let's, let's get going. First of all, let's configure a loopback interface. Okay. Now let's configure OSPF. So router OSPF one. As you can see, the CLI the command just failed. So the CLI to configure SPF seems not to be there. An XOS is a fo fully modular operating system. Most software modules don't run unless the corresponding service is enabled. We haven't enabled the OSPF service, so its code is not running at the moment, and its CLI is not linked into the system. So let's first enable the OSPF service so that we can proceed with its configuration. So OSPF is not the only features that uh, obeys to, the, to this law. We like to, re to, to refer to these features that need to be specifically enabled as conditional services. So let's see what kind of features are there. A lot of features, as you can see. OSPF is there, PBR, PIM is there, port security, uh, RIP, dot one x and so on. So let's go ahead actually and enable the OSPF service. So feature, OSPF. So the OSPF routing protocol is part of the enterprise license, as you can see. Uh, you can see also that uh, this license is not installed on the system. However, I can still use the feature, meaning OSPF, by using the grace period. The grace period allows the customer to run features that belonging to uninstalled licenses for up to four months. When 60 days is the only time left, the system will start generating sys syslog messages. So at the point, you know, the customer has to think whether he wants to continue to use the feature and buy the, and purchase the license or stop using the feature. So let's now configure SPF and let's start with a few simple commands. As you can see now, OSPF1, the command doesn't fail, actually it's a seed. So area zero, authentication, message, message digest. One million. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's configure the interface. As you may notice, I didn't specify any network commands. What I want to do is I have uh, three tables running from this device to another Nexus 7000, so I'm going to form a port channel. So to form a port channel, I will use also LACP. On the Nexus 7000, we don't support 